Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my members, Samir Mehra. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members are giving shout outs in my videos. You can become a member by clicking the join button. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation from Kettering University Math Olympiads. I think we've done a problem before from the same Olympiads. Anyways, if I find it, I'll link it down below. So we have 3 to the power x plus 9 to the power x equals 27 to the power x. And we're going to be looking for real x values. Now, to be able to solve this problem, this is you know fairly easy. Uh, we're going to be using substitution. Now, notice that 9 and 27 are both powers of 3. So it would make sense if we replace 3 to the power x with another variable let's use t okay great so now this means that 9 to the power x is t squared and 27 to the power x is t cubed so we can write this equation as t plus t squared equals t cubed so so when somebody looks at something like this they might be thinking like is this an identity obviously that's not it's not always true that you get the first power and the second power you add them up and you get the third power that's not how powers work. If you multiply them, yes, definitely it is true. So t times t squared is t cubed, but their sum is not always t cubed. So let's go ahead and do the following. Uh, let's put everything on the same side. So subtract and subtract. Now, by the way, uh, I call this a golden exponential. There's a reason behind that. We'll talk about uh, that in a little bit. So notice that uh, t can be factored out, which means t equals 0 is a solution. Great. So let's go ahead and take out t. And we get a quadratic, which is fairly easy to solve. First of all, let's write our um, trivial solution here, which is t equals 0. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the quadratic. The quadratic can be solved by using the quadratic formula. And I'm just going to call this t1. So t2 and t3 can be found by using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 4. So 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. And this is where the golden flavor comes in. Hopefully, you are familiar with the golden ratio. And this quadratic equation has two solutions. Let's go ahead and write them separately. So let's just call the first one t2, which is the you know, 1 plus root 5 over 2. And the second one, or the third one, is 1 minus root 5 over 2. So it looks like we have three solutions to our cubic equation, and it makes sense because it's cubic, but this is just uh, a dummy variable, or I don't know, whatever you want to call that. We just used it uh, to substitute our expression. So 3 to the power x is equal to t, and now we need to back substitute. So let's re replace t with uh, 3 to the power x in each case. And this time, I'm not just going to write the t, so don't worry about it. Uh, let's just take the first one. 3 to the power x equals 0. Okay, now does this equation have any solutions? 3 to the power um, positive values or, yeah, uh, anything, 3 to the power anything is basically positive, right? It can't be 0. There's no way. Um, unless x is uh, negative infinity, but negative infinity is not a number. So we're not going to get any real solutions from here. Are there any complex solutions? Something to think about. But we don't get any real solutions for sure. So this doesn't give us anything. Let's go ahead and look at the other ones. How about 1 plus root 5 over 2, which is the golden ratio. So, you know, you can just use the, the symbol. I think it's phi, right? Uh, for golden ratio. By the way, this is also equivalent to... 2 times sine of 54 degrees, which can also be written as 2 times cosine of 36 degrees. So this number is very, very important. You know, think about a pentagon, think about lots of other things. Obviously, you know, there's a huge story behind it. But anyways, do we get any solutions from here? How do we get uh, the solutions? X is in the exponent, so we're going to use logs. Hopefully you're familiar with logs, but even if you're not, just look at the definition. It's fairly easy. So I'm going to log both sides. And I'll use base 3. 
Awesome. And in this case, x moves and log 3 becomes 1 because it's base 3. So x becomes log 1 plus root 5 over 2 with base 3. And this is a valid solution because uh, we can log a positive number, right? It's going to give us a good solution. And this value is about, I think, 0 0.438, something like that. Okay, great. And later on, we're going to look at a graph, and so you, you'll get to see the solution on the graph as well. Let's go ahead and consider t3 now, t sub 3. And remember, t sub 3 was 1 minus root 5 over 2. And that is equal to 3 to the power x. So now by raising both, um, not raising, okay, 3 to the power x equals 1 minus root 5 over 2. So let's log both sides again. And we should be getting a solution from here. But unfortunately, we get an x on the left-hand side. But the right-hand the right -hand side is kind of problematic because 1 minus root 5 over 2 is less than 0, right? 1 minus root 5 over 2 is less than 0. And if you have a negative number, you can't really log it in the real world. So there is no real solution from here. So the only solution happens to be x equals uh, log of the golden ratio with base 3. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the a graph uh, and kind of convince ourselves that this is the only solution. Well, the graph doesn't necessarily mean that there's only one solution. So we kind of have to dig deeper, but let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And then uh, we'll also talk about um, a little bit of details there as well. Now, uh, do we did we have to use substitution here? No, you didn't necessarily do it. You could also write this as 3 to the power x plus 3 to the power x squared equals 3 to the power x cubed, and just proceed with 3 to the power x. Like at some point, you kind of need to substitute because you will need a quadratic uh, formula. But you could still get away with it. Anyway, substitution makes it easy, so why not use it? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and see what it means. Now, I graphed uh, these two equations, 3 to the power x plus 9 to the power x, which is kind of like the sum of two exponentials, which it's kind of like an exponential, and 27 to the power x, which is an exponential. Now, as you see here, uh, our, you know, uh, blue graph, which is the top one, I hope that's the blue color, right? Uh, kind of like a blue. Um, it kind of seems above the, the orange one, which is 27 to the x, because for negative x values, uh, that is the case. When you flip the fractions, like, let's say, 3 to the power negative 1 plus 9 to the power negative 1, this is going to give you 1 third plus 1 over 27. I mean, 1 over 9. And this happens to be um, 4 over 9. But if you flip the other one, uh, 27 to the power negative 1 is going to be 1 over 27. So that's going to give you a smaller value. And you can prove that. But anyways, but later on, they obviously they intersect at a point, which is 0 0.438 for x. And remember, that was the same value that we found before. But what is more significant is that you know, the orange one eventually is going to grow faster. If you look, look at it, you'll see that it's going to grow faster. But there's a nicer way to look at it too. You can go ahead and divide this one by the other function to see their kind of, you know, um, relative growth or kind of compare their growth. And this can be written as 1 over 9 to the x power. And this is 1 over 3 to the x power. But remember, we were setting this equal to 1, right? Because that's what the equation, the equation gave us. Now notice that this is a decreasing function, and this is a decreasing function. So the sum is a decreasing function, which means um, it's always going to be decreasing. Like right? So the graph is going to look like this, something like that, and it's only going to intersect. And by the way, uh, if you replace x with um, 0, you're going to notice that uh, it's going to intersect that too. So the intersection with the horizontal line is just going to be below here, and that's going to be a single intersection point, which means that there's only one solution, which is given by about 0 0.438. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.